Well, it's an absolute pleasure to introduce Naomi McDougall Jones. I'm coming live from Australia on a Friday. I'm talking to Naomi on a Thursday in Idaho. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're very welcome. Um, I want to say uh, before we start talking about Bite Me, I'd like to, well, it's very romantic and Valentine's Day is only a few days away. Are, are you a hopeless romantic? Has any, have you ever done anything really romantic for someone? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I am a hopeless romantic, as you might have guessed from the movie. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, yeah, I uh, one Valentine's Day, my, so my husband and I met at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. Right. So one Valentine's Day, I got like a special ticket to their Valentine's Day um, <laughs> dinner there. Um, yes. And it was like all red among the art and it was really lovely. Oh, that sounds special. Very yeah. cool. Uh, how long did the concept for Bite Me take? Uh, you're uh, a writer on it, you star in it, and, and I'm guessing you're a producer as well. Uh, it's 2019 listed. So is that when you filmed it or was it all happening before that? It seems like a long turnaround since I saw it in 2022. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> films take forever. Um, yes. Yeah, so the, uh, the script itself... I rewrite like a maniac. So I rewrote the script 45 times before we got to set over about a three year period. Yeah. Um, but, but we were, I wasn't just writing the script during that time. We were raising the money and getting yes. it all together and everything. Um, and then we shot it for 21 days. Um, and then it was about a year and a half in post. And then what happened in 2019 is we actually um, took it out for a tour for, a, for an in-person tour in, New York, in uh, the United States. We, it was called the Joyful Vampire Tour of America. And we moved into an RV for three months and we did 51 screenings in 40 cities in 90 days. Whoa, that's a lot of traveling. <laughs> we did 13,001 miles around the United States. Um, it was bananas, but it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what that converts to in a kil kilometers because we have mm. kilometers down under, but that is a lot. That's quite a it's lot. It's a long <laughs> way. <laughs> um, and did you did you sort of change the film or film any extra scenes? Did you get feedback from those, or is it as is from then? No, no, it's it's the same film. So then up after that, it was about to get released digitally internationally, and then COVID happened right then. <laughs> Oh, yes, of course. And so then, so then we had a couple of stops and starts of how to do that the right way. So we were delighted to finally be releasing it digitally through Under the Milky Way now. Uh, why vampires? Why not werewolves? Why not uh, <laughs> anything else? Was, was well, vampires always going to be the demon of choice? This is a funny story, actually. So I, um, I was acting on the set of Boardwalk Empire hmm. and got to chatting with one of the extras one day. And over the course of a very long shoot day, she revealed to me that she identifies as a vampire. Oh, right. So this right. is based on maybe... <laughs> that was my face. <laughs> I was like, okay, what? Yeah. Um, and she explained to me that she's part of this global community of people who identify as vampires. There's actually a huge uh, contingent of this in Australia. I know that for a fact. Melbourne specifically. Right. Um, we've been in touch with them. Uh, and so these are, they don't believe they're supernatural. They don't believe they are going to live forever, but they believe they need to feed on blood or energy to stay healthy. Um, so I went home and fell hard down the YouTube internet rabbit hole of researching this Maybe. community. Yeah. It, they have a lot of vlogs, which is are fascinating to watch. Um, and I just became completely captivated by these these folks um, and also like kind of inspired by them in, a, in kind of a surprising way as it went along because, um, you know, it's a pretty, pretty <laughs> radical life choice. I, would say. Oh, I know, you know and they, well, would, they wouldn't yeah. call it a choice. They would call you a necessity, but, um, but, but it is a choice to, to just choose to act on that. And, um, you know, a lot of them get disowned from their families or pushed to the edges of society. And yeah. I just, I became kind of, uh, stuck by the idea of how with what conviction these people were living their truth why am i not surprised melbourne you know it wouldn't happen in sydney <laughs> or, or, or brisbane but yeah no not that there's any rivalry between sydney and melbourne, and melbourne. <laughs> but that, that's interesting and i'm not surprised that it is a thing because there is also like jedi as a religion so i'm not surprised about I mean, identifying yeah. as a vampire yeah it takes all kinds <laughs> well, well so done then, 
So then I was fascinated about enough that I wanted to make a movie. Yeah, I also want to say well done for using that concept and expanding it into a feature film. <laughs> <laughs> After one little conversation on the Boardwalk Empire set, that's yeah. that's unique. <laughs> um, now, you're very sarcastic in the film. I'm not going to give too much away plot-wise of what happens, but you're very sarcastic and deadpan. Is that you in real life? Do you have those quips and just um, dead eyes sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have the quips, but less the dead eyes. Yeah, that's um, good. <laughs> yeah, it was... Sarah is in many ways probably the the most different from me character I've ever played just sort of energetically because she's um as you say very deadpan very tough very spiky yeah. um, at least pretends not to give a shit what anybody thinks about her so it took me about a month before filming to really get into her body a um, month and okay I, and I actually we had dyed my hair blue a month in advance um to, so that it looked a little faded out by the time we were filming. And I, I started walking around New York City dressed as her with the blue hair and the facial tattoo for about a month before. And it was really... You would have got a lot of comments, I'm sure. It was really fascinating how people responded to me differently. Yeah, comments and also physical aggression. I mean, people people became very rude to me and, and aggressive. Um, and so it's, it, it really helped me develop that sort of 30 yard stare she has because I, like I had to, to, to physically protect myself because if I mm. looked like her, but projected the vulnerability that I have, it was unsafe. So I had to sort of develop that tough exterior. Well, it worked and, and did it hurt, <laughs> did it hurt getting the laser removal to take off the tattoo? Yeah. Total nightmare. <laughs> Thought it might. <laughs> well, so was that applied daily? Uh, yeah, it was. A bit like yeah, Russell Crowe. Yeah. Do you remember uh, Robert Stomper? Um, Russell Crowe was covered in tattoos. Do you remember that? Yeah, film? that must have been yeah. such a headache. I mean, even one is tricky. Because I was going to say that's different. Just having one. Because it works um, like it, like kids' temp tattoos. You know, I mean, it's better quality, but you know, yep. it's like on a piece of paper. You put a washcloth. And so we actually had a woman, Janae Chin, whose entire job on set was that tattoo because it had to be reapplied every day and it had to be perfectly in the same place every day, which is really hard. Yeah. Um, and so she'd often have to apply it like two or three times in a day because she'd look at the picture, look at it. It was like slightly off. <laughs> it, <laughs> it looked like it was the same every time, every time I saw it. Well, she did a really good job. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, there's a really cool club in it. I wanted to go to it. Like the music was good. The, the, the crowd looked good. Were they extras or were they all friends and family? Like what, who were they? Because they looked they, like they were, they were re the real thing. <laughs> no, they were mostly our friends and family, which was like amazing. Because cool. I mean, it was like a, that, the, I mean, it was a, it's a huge scene. So we had to show up at like 5 a.m. on the Lower East Side, you know, that day. <laughs> And like 75 of our friends and family showed up, not only at 5 a.m., but in with their own vampire costumes. Their own gear. Amazing. That's good. Mostly. I mean, our, our costume designer provided some of it, but a lot of them just had that stuff. <laughs> I, I wanted to join in. It would look like a good club to be at, but not at 5 a.m., probably not at 5 a.m. <laughs> Uh, like any good romance, and that's essentially what this movie is, you've got to have chemistry with someone and you definitely have chemistry with your male lead, a non-vampire. Uh, tell me about him. Did you cast him? Have you known him beforehand? Because the, the chemistry works. You clicked on screen. That's good to hear. Um, yeah, no, we didn't know him at all. Oh. Um, and we, so Christian played Tom Riddle in the Harry Potter movies. Um, and yes. we've kind of known from the beginning that we wanted specifically a Harry Potter cast member because... Oh, you we, went into uh, that ahead thinking, well, some someone from Harry Potter will do. Yeah, not, I mean, and not only because like basically every good English actor is in that series at some point, but also sure. because, um, and he was written to be English, but also because we figured that if you like Harry Potter, you'll probably like this movie. So it seemed like a good way to attract the right audience. Yeah. Um, and so when we offered the part to Christian, when you're a small little movie like us, his and he's a big deal, his agent actually wouldn't let him audition for us. Oh, really? Which makes, which makes the chemistry thing really hard because if, you're right, like if that's not there, the movie, it doesn't matter how good the movie is, it's not gonna work. That's right, yeah. Um, and so they agreed that we could have one meeting with him ahead of time. We couldn't audition him, but we could have a meeting before he accepted the or not. 
Um, and so it was decided that I needed to go to this meeting so that I could go and like try to covertly check out if there would be chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> did you go in costume though? Because you would have no, scared no, everyone didn't. off. I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to scare them off right then and there. That's right. <laughs> um, so I did. It seemed like it would be okay, and uh, we got super lucky. And of course, he's wonderful. Oh, he's great. Yeah, he's terrific. And you have a uh, when Harry met Sally moment when you're running through well, running through the streets. I, that's the first movie I thought of. And I thought, you, I, <laughs> is that on purpose? I mean, every good romance has running. So you, no, you I mean, it. you need the running to get the guy at the end of the movie scene. <laughs> you did it. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another, I know time is an issue, but I want to ask a couple more questions before we wrap it up. Um, there is another Naomi in the cast. She's very unique, beautiful. <laughs> I, I've um, seen her in a couple of other projects. Uh, yeah, what's it like working with her? I'd love to interview her one day. I've always seen yeah. her and looked, wow, she's got this particular look and she just bursts off the screen. She totally does. Naomi Grossman. Yes. Um, yeah, so... I actually wrote that part for her, oh, not not intentionally, but because right. I didn't know her, but we had a mutual friend. And so she was kind of, she was like somebody I was aware of and also aware of because of American Horror Story. And so yeah. just every time I wrote a draft, she would be in my head as Chrissy. Um, so then when casting came around, I had to write her this letter being like, look, <laughs> but, could you please play this part? I wrote it for you. And and like nobody else could have played it because when we when we did workshops of the script in the years leading up to production with different actors um, who were wonderful, but the whole movie would work and everyone was like, but what that Chrissy part doesn't work. And I'm like, I know, but it would if Naomi Grossman was playing her. <laughs> and it did. It did. So luckily she said yes. I love that. I absolutely love her. I can't say how much I like watching her in mean movies and, and shows. Uh, uh, was Bite Me always the title? Uh, did you go through various titles or was that it from the start? No, um, I'm very, I, I, am, I hate coming up with titles for things. It's like my least favorite part of the process. Um, but luckily this one just presented itself almost immediately and it was so fun. We were like, well, obviously that's the title. Um, Although funnily enough, so it's being released globally now and in non-English speaking countries, it's being released under the title Vampire Love. Vampire Love. Okay. okay. Which is an extremely accurate description of what this movie is. It is. It is very, very well done. Well, I like Bite Me. I, I thought, I know some movies go through extreme changes with titles. I thought this one might have, I'm not sure. No. And we were so lucky because it, it occurred to me and I thought, well, there's got to be another movie out there that had that like was famous and had that title before us and there isn't okay that's good yeah. there's nothing worse than having two or three movies with the same title you know from okay. different different generations or eras you yeah. know that, that is confusing at times uh yeah. what's next uh, after this becomes a global hit for you <laughs> and you get in demand uh what's what's next have you got anything on the agenda that you can share or is it up you know very up to being kept secret right now no, no, I can definitely share. So one is that uh, Christian Coulson and I actually co-wrote a TV series version of Viking. Oh, oh um, that right. Pitching around. So maybe, because people kept asking for a sequel on tour and we're like, a sequel? It's a romantic comedy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but what we took from that is that people loved the characters enough that they wanted to hang out with them more. Um, yeah. So we're going to see if we can make that happen. And then I also, uh, we just set shoot dates for my third feature film um, for March of 2023, which is called... Hammond Castle, and it's a magical realism piece about a seven-month pregnant woman who gets locked overnight in a castle full of famous ghosts. Famous ghosts. Okay, so we're going to recognize these ghosts, are we? Mm -hmm. uh, awesome, awesome. I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. Uh, and finally, um, your movie's getting released around the world, like here in Australia and everywhere else. How does that make you feel, like that you're going to get eyeballs on it from everywhere people are going to start stopping you in the street naomi <laughs> well i don't know about the last part but uh yeah i mean my skin was tingling as you were saying that i mean that's like the amazing thing about the modern world right to think about i mean as a filmmaker to think about anybody sitting down and watching your story and responding to it is thrilling but to think about you know um people in australia and christian is a huge fan base in turkey and so we keep getting contacted by people in turkey and like <laughs> uh it's just it's so amazing to think about you know getting to to reach people over all around the world 
Who's the number one co-star that you haven't worked with? Uh, a fellow colleague actor that you would be a dream casting on a project with you? Well, we're stalking Carrie Elwes for the next film. So Good luck. if you know him, so if he's watching this video, <laughs> put the word out. I said hello to him once at a convention uh, in Sydney uh, and I didn't have an official interview, but we spoke for maybe 90 seconds off the record, a couple of minutes okay. off the record. So uh, he, he, nice? he, he seemed nice, very tall, <laughs> very interesting guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and was happy, happy to talk about Twister. That was one of the movies I brought up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably something he doesn't get asked about much, but Probably. whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you very much, Naomi. I will uh, stop the recording. But one last thing. Have you ever been to Australia? Uh, have you ever visited Down Under? And can you surf? Um, no and no. <laughs> but one of my best friends uh, moved to Melbourne three years ago, sort of oh. shortly before the pandemic. So I, I hope very much to someday visit her. So does your best friend now identify as a vampire living in Melbourne? No, although she, well, in the, she actually is in, she's in Bite Me. There's a, there's a Melburner in Bite Me. She oh, plays uh, cool. Mia Romero. So she plays uh, Regan, who's um, Sarah's uh, sister, actually, who is the queen of the vampires. Now I've got to watch it again. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and long live Sarah. I hope there's a prequel episode to this, uh, this series because I want to know how she got to where she got. <laughs> Thanks.